Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. In today's video, we're going to talk about wiring. We've had some uh, viewers request that we do a video on the basic wiring of a conversion. So that's exactly what we're doing today. So there's basically two aspects to a conversion. You have your traction pack aspect, that's the battery pack, the controller, the motor, the throttle, so forth, the charger. That's all related around your traction uh, system. And then you have the control system, which is mostly 12 volts. Okay? So, we'll talk about the traction system first. So what we have is a battery pack. Now, you can have different sections of the battery pack. You can have front and rear, left and right. However you have it, or you can have it all together. In our Carmen Ghia, it's all together. On uh, the Porsches that we do, the, like the 911s, 912s, there's uh, saddle racks in the back, so it's split in the back, and you have one in the front. The Mercedes uh, series that we just uh, featured had battery pack in the front, battery pack in the rear. So here's your battery pack, and you, it's best to have the battery pack fused. So you typically want to put the fuse in the center of the pack. So if you have you know, 20 cells, kind of put it between cells 9 and 10, or 10 and 11, somewhere right there. So we come out of the battery pack and we go to a, a switch, a disconnect switch. That allows us to disconnect that battery pack from the rest of the conversion. From there, it goes to our main contact. And we'll talk more about the main contact in a moment. It's controlled by the controller. So when the main contactor is, is closed, your power comes from your pack through your switch through the contactor and to the positive side of the DCN on the controller. Then the negative side goes out, goes through a fuse, our controller fuse, and then goes back, goes through a shunt, and to our negative side. So that's your complete series circuit. That's all a conversion is. Whether it's an AC motor or a DC motor, it's basically a DC series circuit. Your battery is DC. The shunt is, uh, and some use a, a Hall effect or a current detector of some other type. We use a shunt. A shunt is just basically a known resistance and what we're doing is we're measuring the voltage drop across that known resistance and it's converted to amps on a gauge. Okay, But that has to be the negative most point in our circuit. We don't want anything coming off the battery pack before the shunt. Everything has to come off after the shunt so that we can measure all of the current in and out of that pack. Just like we want the disconnect to be the first thing. And so the only other thing that we have connected here before is our charger, but the chargers usually are connected with an Anderson connector and we can disconnect the charger from the system. So there you have it. Going from positive to negative here, through our switch, through the main contactor, to the controller, through the fuse, through the shunt, and back. So the charger, it plugs into, uh, you can plug them directly into a wall, depending on what kind of charger you're using, whatever, but typically, you know, it, it'll be uh, uh, your EVSE, uh, a public charge station, or one that you have in your home on the wall or whatever. And so once the charger's plugged in, power goes through the shunt to the pack and returns the charger, okay? Very simple. 
Now, let's go to the control portion of the conversion. And that's our 12 volt. So here's our 12 volt battery. We just call it an auxiliary battery. In your car, while it was internal combustion, it was a starting battery. You know, that's only one little job it did, but they call it a starting battery. Basically, it's a 12 volt battery that runs all of the 12 volt electronics in the car, as well as started your internal combustion engine. Here, it's just gonna run all the 12 volts in the car, as well as all the 12 volt needs for the conversion. So we come from the auxiliary battery to what we call a power relay. This allows us to only attach to the car's electronics in one point. We're not taking any additional loads off of any circuits in the car. We're only taking a load off of the battery itself. Now, we'll use a switch 12 volt source. So anything that is switched by the ignition. So on the Mercedes uh, project, it had an electric fuel pump and which was separately fused. And we just took that point. So when you turn on the ignition, the electric fuel pump would have come on. That was removed, gone. Instead, it sent power to our power relay. So once the power relay is energized, it closes, it sends voltage directly from the battery to our separate fuse block that we have. And then everything that is related to the conversion, whether it be power brakes, power steering, uh, gauges, everything else comes off of this fuse block, our own fuse block, okay, that we're gonna add. So in this case, I'm only showing two things coming off the fuse block, and one is this key switch relay. So whenever the ignition is turned on, it activates this key switch relay. What that does then is it takes power from the battery pack, goes through the relay, and goes to our DC to DC converter. That's the return leg there. So we have traction pack voltage going to the DC to DC converter. It converts it to a lower DC voltage which will typically vary from like 13.5 to 14.6 volts, depending on the state of the battery. And that comes back over here and ties in to our battery. It's basically in parallel with your auxiliary battery. It replicates the alternator in the internal combustion vehicle. So it's sharing the load of the lights and the wipers and your stereo and all that with the battery, as well as keeping the auxiliary battery charged. Okay, so anytime the ignition is on, the DC to DC converter is on and charging your battery. Now, the other one we have coming off here, whenever our ignition is on, we have power going here to the KSI input of the controller, key switch interface. So whenever the ignition is on, our controller will be turned on. Now once the controller is on, it will first turn on our pre-charge relay. So here's our pre-charge relay. So the controller is what controls it. It's after we turn on the ignition, it powers up. It turns on the pre-charge relay. And then the pre-charge relay is going to take power from our traction pad, put it through a resistor, and then into the controller. So what that's doing is it's allowing a little bit of current to pre-charge the capacitors in the controller. So you don't have this sudden rush uh, when the contactor closes. So that's what the pre-charge does. It comes on first, pre-charges the caps. When it senses that everything is pre-charged, then the controller also then will turn on the main contactor. Okay. So now, your, your pre-charge relay shuts off, the main contactor turns on, and so like I said, power will come from your battery pack through your main contactor and to the controller. You also have a throttle input to your controller. And there's a lot of other inputs that, uh, that go into a controller that you can use or not use based on 
your conversion and your desires. I'm not going into all of the inputs, just these, these are the basics. And so you need a throttle input, tell the controller how fast to spin the motor. The only part of this AC conversion that's AC is from the controller to the motor. And they're labeled UV and W. Very simple to hook up. U to U, V to V, W to W. Bang. Okay? So that's the basics. That's a, an EV conversion wiring in a nutshell. You can make things more complicated, but you're not going to really make them too much simpler. Um, but like I said, in response to viewer requests, we, uh, we put this together. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please direct all comments and questions to info at ev 4 If you just do it uh, through YouTube, it may or may not get responded to. It may or may not get read. So thanks again for watching. Hope to see you next time.